these community groups. It's an honor, it's a privilege to be able to uh, study God's Word today with you. Uh, we're going to be looking at the parable of the watchful servants. It's found in Luke 12, 35 through 40. Then in verse 41, Peter asks a question, which Jesus responds to that gives us a little more context. Uh, it also is a parable but it gives us a little bit more of an elaboration on the first parable. So what is a parable? A parable is a simple story that is used to illustrate a moral or spiritual lesson as told by Jesus in the Gospels. So we're studying these parables in Luke uh, to glean uh, from the teachings of Jesus, uh, what he taught his disciples and those that were around him, all here during his earthly ministry and seeking ways to understand them both in their original context and also in how can we apply them in our context as well. What does God demand of believers? Luke 12, 1 through 12, just for background, begins with a warning against hypocrisy. Luke 12, from 13 to 53 addresses issues such as covetedness, watchfulness, the superiority of God in contrast to what man may have on earth. But here today we're going to be studying the parable of the watchful servant. So if you will turn to Luke 12, 35 through 40, we're going to begin there. In this section, once again, Jesus tells two parables. Verses 35 through 40, and then 42 through 48. And in between, you have a sandwich of a question from Peter. Under the heading, you must be ready. Verse 35, stay dressed for action and keep your lamps burning. And be like men who are waiting for their master to come home from the wedding feast, so that they may open the door to him at once when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds awake when he comes. Truly I say to you, he will dress himself for service and have them recline at the table, and he will come and serve them. If he comes in the second watch or in the third and finds them awake, blessed are those servants. But know this, that if the master of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have left his house to be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you don't expect. Before we dive into looking specifically at this verse, I want to share a quick story from uh, our time in Uganda. So as missionaries in Uganda, everyone has 24 hours around the clock security guards or servants. Uh, there's even on most compounds what we call a servant's quarters or a boy's quarters. And it's expected culturally that you would have servants to watch over the belongings or the homestead. There were approximately two uh, unfaithful servants, one of which uh, came home at nine o'clock one night with Megan and the kids and honked on the horn multiple times, no answer at the gate. I'm worried that this gentleman may be deceased or having a stroke, so I climb up on the fence and I look over the fence, uh, over the barbed wire, and I see him sitting right next to the gate, fast asleep. And of course, I subsequently let him go and went on to search for a more faithful servant, someone that I knew would be ready at all times and watching. Here Jesus taught that the disciples should be ready at all hours because the Son of Man will come at a time that they will not expect him or like a thief in the night. This parable describes a scene in which several servants were waiting for their master to return from a wedding banquet. It should be understand in the context of the time that these wedding banquets were not short affairs. They were oftentimes either one or two day events. So these servants that had been charged to watch over the house had to remain vigilant. If one of them needed to sleep, the other two had to be awake. If two of them needed to sleep, the one better be very vigilant and watchful. But the point of this is that they had to remain constantly vigilant, awaiting the master's return. 
so that when he comes into the house, that they would have been watching and ready. Their master will serve them, maybe pouring out blessings upon them. Uh, in, in the context of Uganda, I, I had one guard that was just super faithful, and I didn't buy him sodas and, and Rolexes, which is a type of food there in Uganda, not a watch. But we didn't buy those things for him because we just wanted to buy them, but we bought them because we wanted to reward him for his faithful service. The second watch uh, alluded to here was from 9 p.m. to midnight. And the third watch was from midnight to 3 a.m. The point of the words about the thief in verse 39 is the same. The disciples must be ready for the Son of Man will come like a thief in the night. Also for us to understand is that these homes typically were mud, made out of mud and dirt or clay. And most thieves would enter by burrowing or digging in their way into the house. So it wasn't like uh, where we would hear a window bashed out of our, our home and there would be some audible alert. It could be a covert operation for a thief to break into the home. And these servants had to be faithfully vigilant, always watching, always listening, always being attentive, perhaps patrolling. Here we have a break. Uh, Peter asks a question. He says, Lord, are you telling this parable for us or for all? Interestingly, Jesus does not answer Peter's question directly in verses 42 through 48, but his answer shows that he's speaking mainly to the apostles and those that are in authority. Let it also be known that as believers in the gospel of Christ, that we all have the responsibility and the authority to take the gospel. We're commanded to take the gospel out. And in Luke 12, 42 through 48, the Lord said, Who then is the faithful and wise manager whom his master will set over his household? to give them their portion of food at the proper time. Blessed is that servant whom his master will find so doing when he comes. Truly I say to you, he will set him over all his possessions. And we're going to take a break here. That master is going to set the faithful and wise manager over all his possessions. With more, uh, the more responsible that we are, the more opportunities uh, it's implied that we will be given to be witnesses to the world. But if that servant says to himself, my master is delayed in coming and begins to beat the male and female servants and eat and drink and get drunk, the master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him and an hour that he does not know and will cut him into pieces and put him with the unfaithful. And that servant who knew his master's will, but did not get ready or act according to his will, would receive a severe beating. But the one who did not know and did what deserved a beating will receive a light beating. Everyone to whom much was given of him, much will be required. And from him to whom they entrusted much, they will demand all the more. Let me be clear on one thing. As Christians, as having the knowledge of God's grace through faith in Christ, we have much responsibility. Jesus didn't primarily, or didn't answer Peter's question directly here. Instead, these verses indicate that he was talking primarily about the leadership of the nation at that time. The religious leaders were supposed to be managing the nation for God, looking forward to the Messiah's arrival until he brought in the kingdom. However, we all know that they failed in that task. They were not looking expectantly towards the kingdom. Because of the penalty exacted in verses 46 and 47, Jesus must not have been speaking about believers who were not ready. He seems to have been referring to the nation's leaders who would be present at the time of the coming of the Son of Man. Faithless ones, in verse 47, will be judged more severely than those who, though wicked, 
do not know about the coming of the Son of Man. And, uh, and unbelievers with a great knowledge of God's revelation will have to answer for their lack of a response to that revelation. I also would like to say that, you know, there's a quote from Spider-Man, with great power comes great responsibility. As Christians, we have perhaps the greatest responsibility that we have is what we do as we await the Christ's return. As we await the Son of Man to come back and take what is His. We should be sharing the gospel. We should be pouring ourselves out as living vessels. Poured out fully. Sacrificing ourselves as fragrant offerings. And this convicts me just as much as I hope it convicts you. There are times that we become very lazy. Times where... We think, ah, we got time. He's not coming today. But the, the fact of the matter is, and the point of this parable is that Jesus is saying, I'm coming and you don't know when. And the question that we have to answer, are we going to be faithful servants? Are we going to be ready? I hope this discussion, the questions that follow, bring about a lot of clarity, bring about a lot of reflection and that we all glean from it what God intends through the power of His Word. Thank you.